countless times, when street preachers go out for evangelism, they face unbelievably difficult situations, and very few will even have the courage to talk about these difficulties afterward. In today's video, I will bring up the recent stories of men who openly ridiculed God while being preached to, and what happened to them afterward. The incident you are about to witness happened in Redding, Pennsylvania, which is located more than 60 miles northwest of Philadelphia. On June 3rd, during a Pride Month rally in front of the City Hall building, a crowd gathered for the Pride event, including drag performers and small children, holding LGBT-themed flags. On the opposite side of the street, Damon Atkins, a street preacher, stood holding a sign that read, Jesus said, go and sin no more. Just then, reading police officer Bradley McClure engaged in a conversation with Atkins. McClure advised him to be respectful and let the marchers have their day. Atkins responded, know who's cheering for us? The people who are in hell. So you do you, and I'm going to do me. Atkins then began preaching from 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33, which reads in part, God is not the author of confusion. Officer McClure then promptly arrested Atkins, and the crowd involved in the Pride March clapped as he was taken into custody. A resident named Matthew Ware captured the incident on video and later said, what an incredible providence that the Lord is allowing me to film this. Atkins was charged with disorderly conduct and had bail set at $5,000. The charges were later dropped after the Berks County District Attorney's Office reviewed videos of the incident and determined they could not prove a criminal case of disorderly conduct. On a sunny afternoon in the heart of the European city, a street preacher stood on a busy street corner, passionately sharing his religious beliefs with passers-by. The preacher's voice reverberated through the air as he spoke about his faith and encouraged listeners to consider the spiritual aspects of life. However, amidst the crowd, a man who seemed intent on challenging the preacher's message emerged. Eyewitnesses described the man as flamboyant and boisterous, with a flair for provocation. He began to mock the preacher's beliefs using satire and sarcasm to demean him and his message. The atmosphere grew tense as onlookers watched the confrontation unfolding. As the man continued to mock and throw tantrums, the street preacher used all the politeness he had in him to maintain his composure, responding with calmness and dignity. However, his attempts to engage in a meaningful dialogue were thwarted as the man persisted in his disrespectful behavior, drawing attention and causing a commotion. Authorities were soon alerted to the disturbance, and police officers arrived at the scene to defuse the situation. Eyewitnesses reported that the man's mocking and disrespectful behavior had incited anger and frustration among some members of the crowd, leading to heated exchanges between supporters of both sides. The incident quickly gained traction on social media platforms, with videos capturing the confrontation going viral opinions were sharply divided, with some condemning the man's behavior as disrespectful and intolerant, while others defended his right to free speech and criticized the preacher's approach to evangelism. After this incident, the online reactions took it a nudge higher. Some people argue that public spaces should be free from religious influences, or that people try to convert others to their faith. They maintained that the man's actions were a response to what they perceived as an intrusion of religious beliefs in a secular setting. They viewed his mocking behavior as a way to counterbalance the perceived dominance of Christian intrusion in public spaces. Similarly, this other incident where a man confronted an innocent preacher is totally bizarre. While this street preacher was sharing the gospel with passers-by, a man in jeans and a hoodie came out yelling in the open square that he was Satan. This incident happened on a sunny noon in 2022, as an unnamed man was preaching to the residents. One of the passers-by came right up and stood in front of him yelling, I am the devil. In another scenario, an unknown atheist came out to try to silence a preacher who was on the street trying to share the gospel. But why would he do such a thing? Why would he come out to make such a bold testament in the presence of everyone? Our generation has become so cold to the word of God. They take every unfair circumstance that happens in their lives as a direct excuse to oppose God and Christ. It is no wonder that when one of these men was asked later why he opposed the gospel 
and even ripped off the pocket Bible that the preacher gifted him, he made a very baffling yet thought-provoking statement. Guess what he said? I don't like God. Because of God, my dad left me. That's what this man said. But when the preacher asked if God made his dad leave, he backed off, saying, it's because God made man. Another incident of public opposition to the gospel happened when a lady stood up to a street preacher in 2021 during World Evangelism Day. During the confrontation, the lady announced she doesn't believe and can never be a believer. When the preacher asked why she doesn't believe in God yet still calls on him when she has issues, she ignored him and instead yelled, why should I believe in some guy just because he hung on a cross? You know, this is exactly what Jesus talked about in Matthew chapter 7 verse 21 when he said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. This is why we have so many people who call on the name of God, yet their hearts are very far from who they call after. Some even call on God's name in vain. They use it as a prank, a curse word, or as an exclamation phrase. That's why you often hear people say, Jesus, you're freaking me out, or oh my God, when they are in shock. Not that these words or phrases are bad, but when we use them even when the situation doesn't call for it, it is tantamount to using the Lord's name in vain. But for the initiative of Christ and the Holy Spirit, which he so freely gave to the world after his ascension to heaven, people who find it a habit trampling on the Lord's name or ridiculing Christianity would have had to face a grisly fate. But thank God for Christ, who is always interceding on behalf of the world. A very striking case of mocking and disrespecting the name of God happened in the days of the apostles. One man who mocked and disrespected God in the Bible and instantly faced his wrath was King Herod. The book of Acts chapter 12 records that after Herod announced while on the throne, he raised his voice telling the people that they should revere him because his words were not man's words, but God's. This unhealthy comparison can be seen as a mockery. No wonder the angel of the Lord struck him down just then, and he died with worms. This goes to show the danger of man ridiculing God. It's like ridiculing the Holy Spirit, which is warned against in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. If we look all through history, we will see many instances where men tried to obstruct the word of God and paid heavily for it and in most unfortunate cases, they didn't live to recount the story. But believers will always face bits of persecution in their lives. Jesus Christ said that those who want to follow him must be prepared to carry their cross along. The cross here signifies several things, but mainly, it signifies persecution. The persecution preachers of the good news would have to face while trying to share this same good news with the world. And when talking about persecution here, it doesn't just imply the type that the apostles were chased by Roman authorities from city to city, captured and imprisoned. It's not just the type that you will be burnt at a stake like Matthew, the disciple of Christ. In Matthew chapter 5 verses 10 to 12, Jesus said that those persecuted for righteousness sake are blessed and should rejoice and be glad, for their reward is great in heaven. He also said that this is how the prophets before them were persecuted. The book of John also confirms that the world hates Christians because they are not of the world, but Christ chose them out of the world. Hence, if the world persecuted Jesus, the Son of God, it will also persecute his followers. The persecution we believers face in this modern age is public opposition, scorn, and silence when trying to reach out, like in the case of those street preachers. But do not be alarmed, child of God, for Jesus himself assured that he will be with us even in such trying times. As Paul said in Philippians, we should rejoice when Christ is preached and when we are hunted for his sake, whether in pretense or truth, because this will turn to our credit through the prayers of the saints and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Knowing that he has not and will not abandon us is enough reason to be encouraged to spread his wonderful news to the world against all opposition. Kindly reach the comments section and share your street preaching testimony with us. I can tell you this will go a long way in encouraging others to do the same. Until I come your way next time, endeavor to like, subscribe, and share this video with others. Thank you and stay positive.